Actually, not really. But the Bible does talk about the devil. And that's basically, you know, kind of the same thing. So in a roundabout way, it even talks about that. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. What I want to talk about today is talk about how do we know that the Bible is reliable? How do we know that the Bible is inspired of God? How, I mean, how, how do we know that? I mean, how, how do we know that it's different than any other book? I mean, it looks like any other book from the outside. How do we know that really what it's saying really is true and really are the words of God? Well, in 1952, a guy by the name of Sanders came up with some criteria for developing, um, figuring out the authenticity of historical writings. And certainly the Bible is a historical writing that's very, very old. To try to figure out if what was being said was actually true. He came up with three things that we can look at, and I want to talk about those in regards to the Bible today. And you can, you can write these in your notes. Uh, the first thing is what's called the internal test. I'm going to go ahead and give this to you, and then we're going to talk about them. The second one is called the external test. And the third one is the bibliographic test. Okay, let's first talk about the internal test. And that is to say, what do the writers themselves say? Do they claim that that work is true? Now, what's amazing is, is we know that the New Testament in the Bible was written between the years 47 and 95 A.D. It's obviously a very old work. And some of the people that saw, um, that, that witnessed the things, the stories about Jesus, the miracles, the things that happened that are being written about in the New Testament, they were actually still alive at the time when some of these things were beginning to be written. And so there were eyewitnesses that were there to these things, and they surely could have come up and said, hey, this is not quite accurate. This is not true. And so this scripture right here, 2 Peter 1.16 says this, We did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses to His majesty. So the people that are writing this book claim and say what we are writing about is true because we have seen it. And you know what's really interesting about that is many of the, the disciples, in fact all of them except for I believe one, were actually killed for what they said about Christ. They were, they were what we would, we would call a martyr for that. And, and many of them were very, very poor. Uh, they were very persecuted. They had absolutely nothing to gain by saying the things that they said were true. In fact, it even probably made their life a little bit more difficult. And it just kind of adds to the fact the, 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 the internal test, surely the people that were writing these things surely said that they were true. The Bible does pass the internal test. You know, have you ever tried to, um, you know, it's funny, you've got 12 people in a room, and you tell them all a story, and you say, okay, here are the facts of the story, and you make it a little bit detailed, and you go out, and I guarantee you, over the period of years, that story is going to change a little bit. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to get molded. And some of them are going to make it sound a little bit more exciting. Some of them are going to make it sound a little bit less exciting. And some of the facts are going to change. We were with some of my relatives who I haven't seen for a long time uh, here this past weekend. And uh, I was telling a story about something that happened that I remember that, that, that my brother and my cousin had done. And, 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 and she couldn't remember the story. You know, but of course I remember it as plain as day. And I'm sure that that story has probably been embellished a little bit over the years. It's a little bit changed a little bit. But people have different accounts. But it's amazing how the writers of the Bible spread out over a different time how accurately their stories line up together. It can only mean one thing, that what they saw was true and that God was surely bringing this thing together to make it cohesive. Okay? The internal test. The second test is the external test. And that is to say, what does outside evidence say about the Bible? So not the stuff that's written in the Bible, but the stuff that is outside the Bible. Well, we know as a fact that Jesus is very well documented as a historical figure. Okay, there are writers outside of the Bible that talk about the person of Jesus. There was a first century historian by the name of Josephus. And Josephus wrote about Jesus as well as other New Testament figures uh, throughout the Bible. And that is an ex example of external evidence. Um, also, we can look at archaeology, because in the Bible you have some very detailed stories about instances and events uh, in places 
that were really there, and so surely we would have some archaeological um, evidence that would come up. Well, up until the 20th century, we actually did not have a lot of archaeological evidence, but in the 20th century, literally, there were hundreds and hundreds of finds that began to support the characters and the events that happened uh, in the Bible. In fact, there was an archaeologist by the name of Nelson Gluick, and Nelson wrote this down. He said, it may be stated categorically that no archaeological discovery has ever controverted a biblical reference. In other words, anything that has ever been found has never gone against something that was written or stated in the Bible. Um, a couple years ago, I got to see a really cool exhibit of biblical artifacts. And in that exhibit, one of the most powerful things that I saw were some coins. And I was looking at the coins, and there was one that actually had the picture and the inscription of Pontius Pilate. And I remember sitting there going, you know, it was like double take, Pontius, Pontius Pilate? The guy that was, that was there when Jesus was crucified and hand, had him handed over to the, to the Jews to be, to be crucified. And I looked at that and I'm like, wow, to see that actual coin with his name in, in, a, in, a, in a picture of him on there, to think that Jesus himself or one of the disciples could have had that coin in there, I almost said pocket, but I don't think they probably have pockets, had it in their tunic or in their bag or whatever, or handled that thing, is amazing. Archaeological evidence overwhelmingly supports the existence and the truth of the Bible. The third test is the bibliographic test. And this is to say, how well were the original documents translated to today? Okay, so back whenever these things were written originally, the first times that they were ever put down uh, on paper, there was one original, no printing press, no computers, no Microsoft Word. So the only thing that they could do is take the original, and years later, is take another piece of material and copy it, word for word. And that's how we begin to get the copies in those days. Now, how many of you have ever played the game? We do this with our kids. Um, in fact, I don't know what, how it is, but this is like a Sunday after church lunch game that we always play. Because we'll all be sitting here at the table, and somebody will start it. And they'll say a little phrase, like a big red fish, or something like that. Just something real simple. And they'll whisper it to the, to the person next to them. And then, what do we call that? Telephone. Okay, that's what we call it, telephone. And then that person will whisper it to the next person, and it goes around. And we try to, and then the last person has to say it out loud. And we try to see, is, did, it, did it stay the same? And many times what happens is some of the details got left out, or added to, by the time it got back around. And that's where, where the fun of it comes in, to see how it got, it got changed. Well, think about it. The Bible, the writings... People, scribes, sitting there copying word for word, letter for letter, surely they would have made some mistakes doing that. Or maybe you would have got like a, a really corrupt scribe, and he would have thought, boy, this story about Jesus, it needs a little bit of action in here, you know? I mean, let's add a little few stuff to here to make it, I mean, let's not make him, let's not make it, you know, 20 loaves, let's make it 5 loaves, you know? Or let's do this, or let's make it not feed 1,000, but 5,000. Okay? What if we had one of those guys in it? Then that would kind of mess the thing up a little bit. Or it would change over a period of centuries uh, in there. Uh, or, or whatever. Well, what is so weird, though, about that is when you look at the, what they did to try to make these things accurate was amazing. They would actually take, in the Old Testament, one of the scrolls that had, uh, uh, had the scripture on there. And whenever the scribe would be copying it over, they knew the exact number of characters from the start to the end of that particular scroll, and they knew what number the middle character in that entire scroll was. And they would go and they would count. And if they got to that middle letter and it was off by one, you know what they would do? They would take the entire scroll and they would burn it. And they would throw it away. 